also, please allow me to ask, as a final question before the trial begins, just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula since they were rather straightforward and easy. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rasula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, when something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. So, you mean, the ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina? And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. That's right. That house was a magic box rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Arrhenius. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh, you're welcome? Of course, this performance was only made possible with Father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. We had to select a location, construct a giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. So, in other words... The earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? That's right. It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. As for you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. Oh? <laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <laughs> It's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. Madam Prosecutor, please allow me to pass this along. This is a document that Miss Charlotte applied for and received permission to share with you during the trial. According to her, it should speed up the proceedings. Huh? Charlotte wanted to give us something? Oh, so she's here too! Hey, Charlotte! Oh, let Paimon see! Uh, isn't this the exclusive interview that she did with us before? So she's already finished it, huh? Oh, <gasps> wait! Then that means this document is a perfect timeline of everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine! So in other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence for an argument! Let's quickly confirm the information in it. Just think of it as a refresher, alright? 
You defeated the Hydro Archon in the very first duel you took part in. I didn't think that you'd wind up getting... This is the first time Monsieur Nervilette had a difference of opinion with the Oratrice. A Fatui Harbinger. The Fortress of Meripede was... According to Monsieur Nervilette, both... I nearly lost my awesome friend Navia. To be honest, that still gives me shivers. The words of someone as extraordinary as a witch can probably only be truly understood when something surreal happens to you. The prosecution and the defense are both in position. The trial shall now begin. <laughs> oh, come on, Nervilette. There's no need to repeat all the unimportant legalese. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. As the defendant and the lead actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. Of course, it is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. That's true, but my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an Archon. Instead, I would like to charge you as a fraud who has never been the Archon in the first place. Wait, what was that? Lady Farina's a fraud? Hey, I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking her duty, but did I hear that right? She's not our Archon at all? Charge accepted. Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? Uh, uh, Lady Farina. I plead not guilty. How can I be guilty? There is no way that I, Fosalor, otherwise known as Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters, kindreds, peoples, and laws of Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. Yeah, even though Lady Farina can be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but, but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim? I have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in this case. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. See? <laughs> Even the Oratrice has decided to show me its favor! Are you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? If you wish to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice that you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. What do you say to that? Huh. An argument with near impossible odds, huh? We have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. Well, I tried to give you the chance to surrender. If you must persist, then let me ask. If you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? And if I was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? First of all, you may be a member of another long-lived race which would allow you to naturally possess an extended lifespan. And second of all, even if that wasn't the case, there could be other ways to extend your life. <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the knave? You'd sink so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. A curse? I once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. But in light of this claim, Perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, but a curse after all. You sensed it too, huh, Nervalet? Lady Farina is actually a human? Well, it is true that it's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just by looking at them. It's not impossible. Well, 
Well, don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse like you said, how does that prove that I am merely a human being? Besides, everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. For centuries, manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. One need only to turn their eyes towards the oratrice mechanique d'Annelise Cardinal in this very opera house, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. to reference the Oratrice. But weren't you as confused as all the rest of us when the Oratrice declared Child to be guilty without any proof? Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There is no need to provide an explanation. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. While the court is in session, the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. While you are an Archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial. You will prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. I never thought. You'd use that kind of rhetoric against me. That was no trick of rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've merely reiterated the rules of the court. Rules that all should respect and follow. <laughs> so, you neither knew why Child was declared guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? The real Hydro Archon? Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally. And it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. You can't... You can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no god at all. <sighs> She's still throwing out all kinds of excuses. Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that she has no power over the Oratrice. My power as an Archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. How can I just carelessly demonstrate the formidable power of an Archon? If that poses a concern, I'm prepared to extend my protection to the audience. Um, you don't need to go that far. I... Uh, Aren't you the Hydro Archon? Or is it that you can't even wield the power of Hydro, much less the authority of a god? Indemnidium! Yes! It's all because of Indemnidium! All Archons derive their power from the faith of the people, and I've converted the people's faith in justice into Indemnidium! Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone with energy for their daily lives! Have you ever seen a more magnanimous god? <laughs> Isn't that a huge stretch? Yeah, no matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Can a god with no power even still be called a god? It seems like nobody's buying Farina's excuse. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. I'm still the same Farina you knew, right? The one that you loved. <laughs> Shouldn't you want to believe in me, please? You've got to believe me. If what the prosecutor said is true, she really has committed a grave offense. Did she deceive all of us? And all of our parents and grandparents too? And all of our ancestors? Ever since they were born? Enough. That's enough. Tell me then, if I'm not the real Hydro Archon, then who is? If you have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be such, 
Then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? Wow, she came up with yet another argument. Ugh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up. compelling evidence to build our case. on claiming to be a god and not a human, then there's a method that you can use right here and now to eliminate all suspicions of you being the latter. Miss Navia, please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before addressing the court. Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. <sighs> uh, super sorry, Monsieur Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time that I'll speak out of turn. Now. I've brought some seawater from Poisson. As everyone knows, a massive flood struck the area not long ago, taking many lives, including those of some of my closest friends. So, Miss Farina, would you dare to touch some of the seawater? If we are to believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon, touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. But, if you don't dare to touch it, then we would have basically proved the reverse. Oh, and I must remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. I do hope you'll act prudently and choose the simpler path of admitting guilt. Navia from the Spina di Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. Would she really dare to try? Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. <sighs> well, of course you had to tell her that. But refusing to participate is basically the same as a confession of guilt. She's just staring at the water without saying a single word. It really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. That could only mean... What's going on? Is she really planning to... Uh, that's not what we thought she would... <sighs> Due to the inherent risk of the test, Lady Farina, you may... <clears throat> what? Hey! <sighs> I... I'm fine! Look! Look at me, everyone! My hand is still here! I haven't been dissolved! Will you believe me now? I really am your Archon! I'm nothing like a normal human who would fall apart as soon as they touch this water! Really? Was this not the most obvious thing in the world? Miss Seedwing? If you're present, Miss Seedwing, please come forward and attend to the defendant. Seedwing? Don't be nervous. It'll just take a few seconds. Hmm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. That should be enough. Please announce the results of your evaluation to the court, Miss Seedween. As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that she was experiencing the adverse effects of exposure to primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial seawater of a similar concentration. Thank you, Miss Seedwing. Lady Farina, you may return to the defendant's stand. Oh, wait. What did she just say? I didn't get dissolved. 
Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? Well, considering your tendency to run from your problems, we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. However, after extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough to dissolve an actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected might occur, we don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. Yeah, so out of regard for Farina's life, you secured a low concentration sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Farina could have... I... I can't believe... You... Listen to me! Listen to me, everyone! Please don't give me such cold and disdainful looks! What happened just now didn't prove a single thing! Think about it! How can you conclusively prove that an Archon can't also be affected by the primordial seawater? Also, also, if I was really just a human, why would I dare to just put my hand in that kind of water? Please, everyone, anyone, just listen to me! I swear, I really am your Archon! <sighs> I don't think anything she says at this point will sway anyone. The odds are just too stacked against her now. With all the things that have been said, Paimon doesn't think there's any way left for Farina to win. I believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end. If there are no objections, we will move on to the final judgment. <sighs> I don't think anything she says at this point will sway her to his stacked against her now. In my capacity as Chief Justice, I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. As a human who knowingly deceived her fellow citizens, Farina is... guilty. We shall now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Farina is... No, the Oratrice also displays a guilty verdict. Isn't that correct, then? However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. The Hydro Archon, guilty to be punished via the death sentence. Uh, the... the death sentence? That's actually one of the available sentences? I've always thought that it was just a myth. The one and only time the death sentence has been handed out at the court, and it's been given to the very person we've worshipped as the god of justice? What an unexpected twist. Farina's been sentenced to death by the Oratrice? We just wanted to use the trial to show her the seriousness of things so she'd tell us the truth. How did things escalate this quickly? This outcome is indeed quite strange. According to Fontaine's current definitions of justice, as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences. Is this sentence really appropriate for the crimes that have been committed? Yeah! Even Fauché wasn't sentenced to death by the Oratrice. You know, the real evil mastermind behind the serial disappearances case! Indeed. Not only is Farina's sentence overly excessive, the very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. But now, the Oratrice seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. 
What does this mean? Um, excuse me, if I may interrupt. Is the trial still going? Fremenay! Oh, you finally made it! I assume this means you've completed your mission? Mm-hmm. Any mission Father assigns to me will always be top priority. Is... that the first prophecy slate? Huh. So the Nave privately arranged for Fremenade to try and find the missing slate! I looked everywhere and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time to get around some dangerous stretches of water. But has the trial already concluded? Then... doesn't that mean I've come too late? Oh no. Father will be disappointed in me. Thank you for your hard work, Mr. Femine. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. Hmm. <laughs> Traveler, I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates, and would like you to come here and confirm their contents. Huh? So what do you see? What is it? I believe I have now made sense of the Hydro Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. Huh? Isn't the Hydro Archon just guilty of deceiving her people? Oh, wait, no, that's Farina, and we've already proven that she's not the Hydro Archon. Uh, so when you say Hydro Archon, do you mean the real Hydro Archon we've been kind of talking about? In truth, everything that you've encountered in Fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents of these stone slates. However, I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. Okay, let's try to recall the contents of the other three stone slates. Paimo will do her best to help you remember. The first stone slate describes what you just said. It seems to show the previous Hydra Archon using her divine power, and then the Oceanids turn into humans. Does that mean that... Fontanians are transformed Oceanids? Oh, Paimo wasn't expecting that. But if Oceanids can turn into humans, then perhaps this process can be reversed as well. The second stone slate shows Celestia floating in the sky and the Hydra Archon and her people worshipping it together. But the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. This must be the point when the Hydro Archon and the Fontanians were branded with their original sin. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydro Archon sin are the same thing? The third slate shows the Hydro Archon sinking into the sea surrounded by many people. Huh. That reminds Paimon, didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? Well, the fourth slate is the prophecy the Fontanians have been talking about. People dissolving into the sea, the Hydro Archon crying on her throne, and so on. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after that incident, it was just a question of when and not if. We know from the case of the serial disappearances of young women that Fontanians can be dissolved in primordial seawater. But this might be the reason that Fontanians can dissolve. What is about to take place has all happened before. The ch and the original sin cast down on the people of Fontaine by Celestia, as recorded on the stone slates. That doesn't. That doesn't sound. It's not as simple as falling into the sea. When Navia fell into the sea, her consciousness was subjected to judgment. That doesn't... The 
prophecy from the stone slates found its way into society, but not many people believed it at first. The fortress of Meropede was nearly flooded with primordial seawater, which we know can cause Fontanians to dissolve. It seems increasingly likely that the prophecy may come true. If we hadn't dealt with it in time, things could have gone very badly. They'll dissolve into the primordial sea, but won't cease to exist. Their essence will flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an Oceanid. The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm. Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins, and she nearly dissolved. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness and was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripeep was the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass no matter what. The prophecy's contents can all be verified by recent events. If we combine what we know together, loads of truths should come to light. Let's hear them. Incredible! Linny, did you hear that? We're... not real humans. All Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. The evidence for that can be found in how only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial seawater, and how all the girls Vache dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone gathered around for a trial. All of them in the shape of Oceanids. Indeed. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first slate that she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. explain why the Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon to be guilty. It's to account for that ancient sin. The Hydro Archon's true sin was creating us? And yet, after many hundreds of years, the Hydro Archon's creations have turned around to try to judge the Archon within the Opera Epicles. Yeah! Isn't the image here just like when Navia fell into the sea? So wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the fourth slate? In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Did Paimon get all that right? You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect so many pieces of the truth. However, while you were able to decode all the information on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional layer of hidden information using a different power source. When we were at the ruins, I tried to decipher the hidden information recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. Now that the slate collection is complete, 
I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated truth. I believe I should share this truth not only with you, but with all the people of Fontaine as well. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontanians and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. In the Fontaine of old, the previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of her Oceanid familiars for life on land. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves, expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire to become of a similar kind. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, the Hydro Archon, as one of the Seven, did not possess the authority to create a new form of human life. Not one to give in, she eventually found a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her familiars by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanids' blood vessels, creating humanoid mimics in the process. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the primordial sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. As a result, their forms would collapse and they would be reverted to their original forms as Oceanids. Of course, the Hydro Archon never received permission from the Heavenly Principles to create a new human race. And thus, the Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin of appropriating the power of the Primordial Sea. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first came into being. So you... I... We were all Oceanids before we turned into human beings? That's way too much information for me. I think I'm just going to pretend that I never heard a single thing. Wait, but if that's the truth, we can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, her only sin was creating us. This really might be too much information for your regular Fontanian, but it does answer a lot of our questions. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was inaccurate. The slate's respective positions are, in fact, correct. A key point of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than Oceanids. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the primordial sea. The nation of Fontaine is the nation of Hydro, as well as the nation of Trials and Justice. Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment and justice. You may also recall Navia's experience. When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro Archon at the Court of Justice. Yes, it refers to our present situation. I think I'm following now. So, what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy, in truth, Everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy foretold. So now, it seems, we're the ones making sure it comes true. Uh, what should we do? Huh. No matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. Is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled soon? Traveler. I would like to point out another small fallacy in your deductions. About the fourth slate, you probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could in fact only be a small warning of something far worse to come. As for the root cause of the catastrophe, I believe you've already encountered it once before. This eruption was just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause of the disaster. That doesn't... That doesn't... That doesn't sound... 
It was both dream and reality. If we're talking about a true culprit, that could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? The truth, the original sin, the trial, and the root cause of the disaster. <laughs> 